Good evening. Making the headlines on Melo TV Evening News at 8. The People's National Party, PNP, held a press conference sharing the results of a PNP-commissioned national poll done in the month of June. JCF sees firearm and recovers stolen vehicle. 19-year-old Dudus charged with larceny. Men switch gender to commit robbery. Lottery scam arrest in St. James. And residents complain of deplorable roads in Hanover. And now, the details. The Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, successfully seized the firearm and recovered a stolen vehicle yesterday during an operation conducted by the St. Catherine North Operational Support Team, OST, and Quick Response, QR Team. Now, this was made possible through the combined efforts of the Jamaica Eye Surveillance Program and the patrolling units. At approximately 6 p.m., the Jamaica Eye team alerted the St. Catherine North Patrol about a suspicious vehicle. Acting promptly on this information, the police intercepted a Toyota Axio motor car on St. John's Road in the parish. The vehicle was occupied by two men and a teenage girl. Now, upon searching the vehicle and its occupants, law enforcement officials discovered a Glock 9mm pistol along with two magazines and 19 9mm cartridges inside the car. Consequently, all three individuals were taken into custody. The identities of the arrested individuals are being withheld as the investigation progresses. Furthermore, the patrols led to the recovery of a stolen Nissan AD wagon in Angel's Spanish Town. This vehicle had been reported as stolen from the Portmore area. The police are urging citizens to continue supporting their endeavors as they remain dedicated to eliminating firearms, gangs and criminals from the streets. In other news tonight, 19-year-old Derek Dudus Morgan, a resident of Manchester, has been charged with larceny after allegedly breaking into a woman's home. The incident reportedly occurred when the woman left her securely locked dwelling in the Pike District at around 9 p.m. Now, upon returning at 3 a.m., she found Morgan in the vicinity of her home. Upon investigation, it was discovered that a window had been broken and $15,000 was stolen. The police were summoned and Morgan was arrested. He later admitted to the crime during an interview. His court date is currently being arranged. In the meantime, two men who allegedly pretended to be female sex workers in order to rob a man have been denied bail by the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court. The men are facing charges of robbery with violence after reportedly creating fake profiles on a dating site to gain access to the victim's home. They allegedly stole his laptop, phone, cologne and other personal items. The defendants claimed their innocence and requested bail, but prosecutors argued that they have other pending matters before the court. The judge remanded the men into custody until July 21, when their cases will again be mentioned. Still tonight, a man named Mark Lando Lamy, residing in St. James, has been arrested and charged by the Lottery Scamming Task Force for violating the Law Reform Fraudulent Transactions Special Provisions Act. Now, this arrest took place after a series of operations conducted in St. James yesterday. Lamy was found at a location in Cornwall Courts, Montego Bay, where a search of his cell phone uncovered multiple files containing identity information of individuals living abroad. This discovery led the detectives to Lamy's residence in Valley Heights, where they found documents containing the names, addresses and telephone numbers of overseas residents in a dresser drawer. Lamy has been taken into custody and his court date is being arranged. 
Residents and motorists in Hanover are expressing anger and frustration over the extremely poor condition of the main road from Anchovy in St. James to Savannah Lamar through eastern Hanover. The road has been plagued by large potholes for years, but its current state is considered the worst ever. Let me category in my response. I have been on this road since 1980. Listen to me good. I went to this school right here, Mount Ward, right? And I've been on this road from 1980. And I've never seen this road in a worse condition. It has not improved over the years, but it is worse than I've ever seen it. I can tell you that within the last two years, I have had to buy at least half a dozen tires, right? And you see that bus? The other day I had to fix two rims because of the road condition here, right? The roads are not being maintained. They are not, they have, I don't, I can't say categorically that they haven't been fixed in more than 40 years I'm using it. The condition has caused damage to vehicles, with residents reporting multiple tire punctures in recent months. A returning resident described the roadway as a disgrace and the worst he has seen in the entire island. And they flood up the road. Them dig it out much months now and let it see himself. A guy turn over, buy a new brand car and turn over, they follow and then go and home. Is that this totally disgrace? Every day they have to go fix. Every day. What is happening? Eh? Eggs and look on the road 24 7. Kill out the front there. No way I just come from there. I said, hope you're not on the road. But I fix more there, so I'm going to have to run there. Freed! I don't have to come here, I don't have to pay this time, I don't have to do it. You don't have to come on me, talk to you, son, brother. Yeah, it's a damn shame, man. You can't be rash. Eh? And if you get people, MP, get more million last week. Eh? Come on, man, look at chicken back down to four dollar pound for chicken back. That totally disgrace, man. There have been several accidents resulting in serious injuries along this section of the roadway. Something passed out three, four people jack up on the road at the same time because I'm dropping at the pot for that road. The tire man is a hundred. Oh, the tire on your wheel. Yes. Every year. Every year. People push that chop out two tire before they meet them with me. Yes, for them. Very bad, man. Very, very bad. You know? Oh. Something you could have. Have a lot of the residents are urging the relevant authorities, including the National Works Agency, NWA, to address the issue promptly. Still tonight, several vendors operating in Westmoreland have stated that while they appreciate the state of public emergencies' efforts to curb crime, it has negatively impacted their daily sales. One vendor in particular, who sells in the Amity community where the state of public emergency checkpoints have been established, reports losing many customers as they refrain from stopping at the location. The vendors explain that usually commuters and motorists frequent their stalls to make purchases, but since the presence of police and soldiers, people are hesitant to stop. 25%, yes, it would. We were 75 in our day workout, man. So, me see. So, yeah. you, say, you say person that would normally stop and purchase items for you, they're not, they're not stopping them? No, they're not really ever stop. Yeah. You know, Jamaica has a stick, my brother. You know that man like that. We're so jam for it. Yeah, so you're not going to really find a man to stop. Like, the mentality must say, yo, wait, 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 wait. So, I just see that. And in regards to like the state emergency, do you see it as a good thing? I mean, overall for the parish? Yeah, in a sense. In a sense, you know what I'm saying? When state emergency, you know what I'm saying? No, bad boy, I'll keep quiet when I live. Even if they plan to show, they now want to show. This is what I'm So, it kind of calm me down. Everybody see that. Everybody knows that, yeah, when state emergency, some place kind of calm. Continuing with the news tonight, the People's National Party, PNP, held a press conference sharing the results of a PNP-commissioned national poll done in the month of June. 
General Secretary of the PNP, Dayton Campbell, shared a summary of main responses of this poll. The first question that is normally asked in these polls is as to whether or not persons are of the opinion that the country is going in the right or the wrong direction. And when this question was put to the people of the country, we found that 15.6% of the persons said that the country is going in the right direction. This is a decrease of 2.9% from the poll that was conducted in February of this year. So approximately 3% of persons um, less believes that the country is going in the right direction. 53.3% of those persons that were polled are of the opinion that the country is going in the wrong direction. I think that's a very significant figure. One, it is more than 50%, so it's an absolute majority. And two, it is more than three times the number of persons who have the opinion that it is going in the right direction. When questioned on the main issues affecting citizens, Campbell shared that most persons are troubled by the country's crime rates. Overwhelmingly, crime and violence is at the top of the list. 45% of the respondents said that crime and violence is the main issue affecting the country. And you had 16% said high cost of living, another 16% said unemployment, 6% said corruption. This is important um, because this is an issue that is causing a lot of public debate. Um, it is one around which the members of the, the leader of the opposition and the members of the shadow cabinet have signed the Integrity Commission Code of Conduct. We have yet to see any member of the government signing it. And this is polling in the top five of the issues that are affecting the, the country, the issue of corruption. And it, it should be interesting for somebody to cost um, that and see exactly what it is robbing the country of. Other highlights of the poll include an issue of unemployment and the perception of politicians, with leader of the opposition Mark Golding polled at 53.2% for a positive perception and 54.5% of persons had a positive impression of Prime Minister Andrew Holness. When asked if the governing party was deserving of another term in office, a significant number of the responders said no. The question was whether or not the Jamaica Labour Party government deserved another term in office. And 47.6% of the populace said no. Go back to the slide. Don't leave. Don't leave the slide. Right. 31.6% said yes and 20.8 were unsure. And that again is significant, that roughly 50% more, just over 50% more of persons thought that they did not deserve a third term versus those who are of the opinion that they do, do deserve a third term. Dayton Campbell closed out his presentation with the results of voter intention. In 20... 22, in June of 2022, when a poll was done, it showed the PNP polling at 18% and the Jamaica Labour Party was at 34%. It was not our, our best day. Um, as we moved on and we continued to put in some work, in February, when we went into the field, we found that the PNP was at 28.1% and the Jamaica Labour Party was at 279 um, roughly neck and neck, right? Even though that represented a very significant increase for the PNP, increasing 10 percentage points um, in a roughly eight months period. When we went back in, in June, that's supposed to be June for the, the third column of 2023, the PNP has now moved to 30.2% and the Jamaica Labour Party is now at 25%, representing a lead of 5.2%, which is outside of the margin of error, which is 3%. Um, for this poll. Mark Golding, who was present, shared his opinion on the results, citing an improvement for the PNP. This poll result represents a significant event for the People's National Party. We have continued in the trend we have seen over the last 12 months, 
wherein the fortunes of the party with the Jamaican voters has improved significantly to the point where we now enjoy a lead over the Jamaica Labour Party of a little over 5% of persons who are indicating who they would vote for if an election was called now. This is a significant improvement, close to 100% actually, over the 12-month period for the People's National Party. Similarly, the Jamaica Labour Party's fortunes have declined steadily over the period, and hence, having more or less caught them up in February this year, the People's National Party has now surged ahead. The poll was conducted between June 8 to 14 at a sample size of 1,012 by Don Anderson through his company, Market Research Services Limited. In the meantime, the ruling Jamaica Labour Party had dismissed the poll conducted and sponsored by the PNP as fictitious and contrived. The poll was released at a media conference held by the PNP today, which purports to show the opposition party ahead. The JLP highlighted that the poll and its findings are designed to artificially influence public opinion and the release of the party-sponsored poll is part of the PNP's propaganda and misinformation campaign intended to shore up a weak leader, sow discontent and distract the country with political mischief. The JLP noted that they understand the effects of global inflation coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic and the local economic shock of global oil prices on the transportation and electricity sectors. In closing, the party stated that its internal poll findings show the government and the JLP in a continued strong and leading position and noted that the administration is focused on keeping the ship off state, moving forward at a good pace and even keel in rough waters. And that's our news package for you tonight. Thank you for tuning in to Mello TV Evening News at 8. I am Shelley and Hill. Do stay safe, pleasant viewing, and thanks for watching.